have them married na hapa tunao wakiwa wameoana god had brought them together mungu akiwa amewaleta pamoja and now we're going to discover what the rest of the family was like na sasa tunaenda kuchambua jinsi ambavyo familia nyingine ilivyokuwa verse 21 says moja usema isaac prayed to the lord on behalf of his wife Isaka akamomba Bwana kwa ajili ya mke wake because she was barren maana alikuwa tasa the lord answered his prayer naye Bwana akamwitikia and his wife Rebecca became pregnant na Rebecca mkewe akachukua mimba now we'll discover as this story unfolds sasa tuna tutaendelea kufunuliwa kama historia inavyojifunua that for 20 years ya kwamba kwa muda wa miaka 20 Isaac and Rebecca tried to have children Isaac na Rebecca walijaribu kupata watoto Isaac prayed Isaac aliomba but it took 20 years for that prayer to be answered lakini ilichukua miaka 20 maombi hayo kujibiwa this was a major problem for them hili ilikuwa ni tatizo kubwa kwa ajili yao But as we found earlier, lakini kama tulivyoona huko mwanzo, God works with people who has who have problems. Mungu hufanya kazi na watu wenye matatizo. Rebecca wasn't alone. Rebecca hakuwa peke yake. Other women in the Old Testament and New Testament have had this same issue. Wana wa kike wengine katika agano la kale na jipya walikuwa na tatizo kama hili. Her mother-in-law Sarah had this same issue. Mama mkwe wake alikuwa na shida kama hii Sarai. Rachel, the mother of Joseph and Benjamin had this issue. Raheli mama wa Yusufu na Benjamin na alikuwa na tatizo hili. Samson's mother, mama yake Samson Hannah the mother of Samuel Hannah mama wa Samuel and in the New Testament Elizabeth na katika agano jipya Elizabeth but sometimes it seems as though God is more interested in quality rather than quantity na sasa nyingine inaonekana kana kwamba Mungu anavutiwa sana na uwingi kuliko ubora but Isaac didn't resort to the devices that his father Abraham had Isaka haku hakuingizwa na kushawishika katika namna ambazo baba yake alikuwa nazo We know that Abraham took a Hagar tunajua kwamba Ibrahim alimchukua Hajiri and that was a huge mistake na hilo lilikuwa ni kosa kubwa and this world is still suffering from that mistake na ulimwengu huu unataabika kutokana na kosa hilo Instead we read what Isaac did. Na hata hivyo tunasoma kile ambacho Isaka alikifanya. He prayed for his wife. Aliomba kwa ajili ya mke wake. It's a beautiful picture. Ni, ni, ni picha nzuri and that prayer was answered. Na ombi hilo lilijibiwa. In verse 22, katika fungu lile la 22, it begins in a surprising way. Inaanza katika namna ambayo ni ya kushangaza. It says the babies watoto. Not the baby. Sio mtoto. The babies watoto. They prayed for a child and God blessed. Waliomba kwa ajili ya mtoto with more than one. Na Mungu akawabariki zaidi ya mmoja. The babies jostled each other. Watoto wakashindana within her tumboni mwake and she said why is this happening to me naye akasema ikawa ni hivi kwa nini hili linatokea so she went to inquire of the lord kwa hiyo akaenda kumuuliza bwana you know i can remember when my wife was pregnant with our children najua ninakumbuka mke wangu alipokuwa na mimba ya watoto she didn't have twins yeye hakuwa na mapacha But even when there was one baby inside na hata hivyo kulipokuepo na mtoto tu mmoja ndani there was a lot that was going on kulikuwa na vitu vingi ambavyo vilikuwa vinaendelea even one baby in the womb hata akiwa na mtoto mmoja ndani ya tumbo there can be a lot of action there kuna kuepo na 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 mizunguko mingi ndani 
Mothers, mamas, is that right? Wamama, are you only queen? Yeah. Deal. There's kicking and there's rolling and kuna there's elbows. Kupiga, kuna kupinduka, pinduka you imagine. Tafakari. There wasn't one baby in the womb. Hakukwepo na mtoto mmoja tumboni. There were two. Walikuwepo wawili. And they weren't getting on together. Na, na wote walikuwa hazichangaji pamoja. You know, sometimes. Mnajua say nyingine. When children. Are in, a, wa, wa are in a confined space. Wanapokuwa wamefungiwa katika eneo moja. In a small room. Katika chumba kidogo. Or in the car. Au nani ya gari. And they're not getting on too well. Na, na, na hawa patani sana. It can be a problem. Inaweza ikawa ni tatizo. But in a womb. Na, na wako nani ya tumbo. There's nowhere else to go. Hakuna mahali kuingine pa kwenda. And so all of this was going on. Kwa yu haya yote ya naendelea. And Rebecca had some questions. Na Rebecca alikuwa na maswali. She got married according to God's will. Aliolewa kulingana na kanuni za mungu. She got pregnant according to God's will. Akapata mimba kulingana na neno la Bwana. And now we have like a world war going on in the world. Na sasa kwamba tuna vita ya kiulimwengu ikiendelea ndani ya tumbo lake. No wonder the Bible says so she went to inquire of the Lord. Na ishangazi ndio maana Biblia inatuambia akaenda kumuuliza Bwana. She went to God and said, "Why is this happening to me?" Akaenda kumuuliza Bwana akamwambia, "Ni kwa nini hili linatokea mimi?" You know, this is an important example for us. Unajua huu ni mfano mzuri kwa ajili yetu. Just because something is difficult ya kwamba hata kama kuna jambo ambalo ni gumu it's not necessarily god making it difficult sio lazima ya kwamba mungu ndiye anayesababisha just because something's difficult kwamba kama kuna jambo ambalo ni gumu it doesn't mean that god is opposed to it haimaanishi ya kwamba mungu analipinga and the opposite is true. Na kinyume chake kiko sahihi. Just because something is easy, kwamba hata kama kitu ni rahisi, it doesn't mean that God is in favor of it. Haimaanishi ya kwamba Mungu amelirivia. You know, sometimes we can be tempted to think, unajua saa nyingine tunaweza tukashawishika kufikiri that if a door opens ya kwamba mlango ukifunguliwa if an opportunity comes ya kwamba fursa ikijitokeza that it is god ya kwamba ni mungu the devil can open doors too shetani hata yeye uweza kufungua milango and sometimes na sai nyingine god makes things difficult to teach us resilience mungu uweza kufanya mambo kuwa magumu ili kutufundisha uvumilivu sometimes god wants to teach us to persevere sai nyingine mungu ana, anataka kutufundisha kukazana na kushikilia and so God gives Rebecca an answer to her question. Kwa hiyo Mungu ujibu maombi ya Rebecca kulingana na swali lake. In verse 23, katika fungu lile la 23, it says the Lord said to her. Asema Bwana akamwambia, Two nations are in your womb. Mataifa mawili yamo tumboni mwako. And two peoples from within you will be separated. Na kabila mbili za watu watafarakana. One people will be stronger than the other. Kabila moja litakuwa hodari kuliko la pili. The older will serve the younger. Na mkubwa atamtumikia mdogo. And this prophecy came true and is still coming true today. Na unabii huu ulikuwa ulitimia na unaendelea kutimia hadi leo. We know that these two brothers became two different nations tunajua ya kwamba hawa ndugu wawili walikuwa mataifa mawili makubwa one nation became the edomites uh, taifa moja walikuwa ni watu wa edom and they lived in a place called petra na waliishi kule mahali panapoitwa petra the other nation became the israelites na taifa jingine lilikuwa wa israeli 
and the Edomites and the Israelites always at war. Na Edom na wana Israeli wakati wote walikuwa vitani. Even when the Israelites were refugees and they were coming from Egypt into the promised land. Na hata katika kipindi ambacho wa Israeli walikuwa ni 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 ni, ni, ni mateke wakiwa wana wanarudi and they wanted to pass through the land of Edom. Na wakaitaji kupita katikati ya nchi ya Edom. They told them, we won't eat any of your food. Wakawambia, sisi hatuta kula chochote chakula chen. We won't touch any of your crops. Hatuta gusa mazao ye. We won't touch any fruit of your trees. Hatuta gusa matunda ya miti ye. And the Edomites said, no. Na waedomu wakasema, hapana. Go the long way around. Zungu kemi njia hiyo nyingine. And the Israelites had to make an extra long journey to the promised land. Na waisraeli wakalazimika kupita njia ndefu kuelekea nchi ya ahadi. Let's catch up on these two brothers. Ebu tu kimilie hawa ndugu wa wili. Verse 24. Fungula shinane. When the time came for her to give birth, siku zake za kuzazi lipo timia, There were twin boys in her womb. Mapacha walikuwamo tumboni mwake. Verse 25. The first to come out was red. Wa kwanza akatoka naye alikuwa mwekundu. And his whole body was like a hairy garment. Na mwili wake wote ulikuwa kama vazi la nywele. So they named him Esau. Hivyo wakamwita jina lake Esau. Esau literally means red. Esau umaanisha wekundu. And he had this condition that today in English in modern science it's called hypertrichosis. Na alikuwa na hali fulani hiyo ambayo kwa Kiingereza leo wanaita hilo jina which means the whole body is very hairy. Linalo maanisha kwamba mwili wote umejaa manywele. And some Bible scholars believe na wasomi kadhaa wa Biblia huamini that not only was Esau's skin red ya kwamba sio kwamba tu ngozi ya Esau ilikuwa nyekundu but all of that hair that he had was red as well ila pamoja na nywele zote alizokuwa nazo na zenyewe zilikuwa nyekundu so Esau is well named kwa hiyo Esau alikuwa anamuonekano huo he was red at birth alikuwa mwekundu alipozaliwa and he was to live in a city the red city of petra na alipaswa kuishi katika mji mji mwekundu wa petra let's notice verse 26 tuangalie fungu la 26 after this his brother came out with us with his hand grasping Esau's heel baadaye ndugu yake akatoka na mkono wake ukimshika Esau kisigono so he was named Jacob naye akaitwa jina lake Yakobo and it goes on and it says Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth and the Lord has said Isaac alikuwa na miaka 60 mkewe alipozaa so Esau was born uh, Jacob was born grasping Esau's heel. Kwa hiyo Yakobo amezaliwa akishika kisigino cha Esau. And he was given a name. Na akapewa jina Jacob. Yakobo. And what does Jacob mean? Na Yakobo maanisha nini? Jacob literally means deceiver. Yakobo umaanisha mdanganyifu. Then we come to verse 27. Tunapokuja katika fungu la 27. It describes how these boys grew up. Uelezea namna vijana hao walivyokuwa. It describes how Esau became a skillful hunter. Tunaelezea namna ambavyo Esau alikuwa mwindaji stadi. A man of the open country. Mtu wa nyika iliyo wazi. Well, Jacob wakati Yakobo like to stay among the tents. Yeye alipendelea kukaa hemani. Now, the next verse describes how Isaac loved Jacob. Na sasa fungu na Isaac loved Esau. Na sasa fungu linalofuata huelezea jinsi Isaka alivyopenda Esau. 
because he had a taste for wild game, the meat that his son Esau would bring. Kwa sababu alikuwa anapendelea vionjo vya nyama iliyokuwa inatoka porini ambayo Esau alileta. But Rebecca loved Jacob. Lakini Rebecca alimpenda Yakobo. And we say, I don't know if you say it here, but in English, na sisi tunasema kwa Kiingereza, Jacob was a mama's boy. Aha, kwa kiswahili tunasema Yakobo alikuwa mtoto wa mama. Now Esau, Esau, Esau he knew animals. Esau aliwajua wanyama. He knew the tracks that they left in the ground. Alijua nyayo zilizokuwa zinaachwa kwenye ardhi. He knew how animals migrated. Alijua namna ambavyo wanyama wanahama. He knew the seasons. Alijua majira when the animals would come and when the animals would go. Wakati wanyama wakija na wanyama wakiondoka. He knew how to hunt against the wind. Alijua namna ya kuwinda vidi ya upepo he was a good hunter alikuwa ni mwindaji stadi na bora but jacob lakini yakobo just as Esau knew animals kama ambavyo esau alikuwa